Were you here when the, uh, Mount St. Helens went off? What was it like? Tell us, okay? Thunder and dark and um, clouds and you could, um, my Uncle Dick Goble, he um, called us up and says, it went, it went. Mom says, what went? He goes, Mount St. Helens. And Mom says, no, I don't believe you. And he says, look outside. And um, we all looked outside and there's this big old cloud of ash just covering, going real fast across the sky. Real weird. Then all of a sudden it started hell and ash. We went in to check on the property and uh, clean up the place. We visited Truman, of course. We were the last folks to see him at the lake. And he was in pretty good spirit. Had his place all cleaned up, manicured, ready to go. He said, keep a stiff upper lip, kid. He'd be down Tuesday. got up there on Saturday night about midnight, laid out our sleeping bags and went to sleep as best we could. I don't know, I didn't sleep very well. I don't know if it was premonitions or lumps in the ground, but uh, we were awakened by a roar the next morning. And a week ago we had been up there and we watched the mountain do about 30 little poofs all afternoon. Just It was beautiful. And then we thought this was what was happening again. And we saw it blow, and all of a sudden, it, it just grew so fast. The clouds just boiled and boiled and boiled. They were just icky black, gray clouds, and they just started coming toward us, and we knew, hey, this is the big blow. And in about 30 seconds, we were in the car and, or in the car and gone. down almost to Rife Lake when the ash started to fall. And it was, oh, I would say thumbnail-sized splats on the windshield. And every time one of these balls would hit the windshield, it sounded like it was cracking the windshield. Um, we stopped a couple of times to tell people that the mountain had blown up and they'd better get out while they had a chance. And nobody seemed concerned but they hadn't seen what we had seen. And uh, we even met a pickup, a small courier-type pickup with two guys in the front and two guys sitting in lawn chairs in the back. And they were heading up the mountain as we were coming down. And I, we've really been wondering what happened to them, if they turned around in time or, I don't know, because it seemed like just seconds after that that the ash started falling. First it uh, got real dark, you know. I mean, start like a real rainstorm. And uh, I'd been in several of them, so I thought it was raining. And I heard it on the roof there, it was uh, raining, you know, I mean, dropping. I looked out the window and I couldn't see nothing, and, uh, you know, falling. So I went to each one of the other doors and opened the door, went out. And on the third door that I opened, I got a real whiff of sulfur. And then I knew exactly what had happened. And uh, I just went back to work, you know, and the next thing I looked out, it was dark. I couldn't even see across the street there to that building.
Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake, and the heart of the sea. Will we be another Tom Page buried under the ash? Or will we come to it? And in the morning, the Tom was gone, the light was there. Tremendous sensation. And ordinarily, now I guess we take this so much for granted. Sure, the light is going to be there in the morning when I wake up. But the light wasn't here last Sunday afternoon. And it's going to help me be more appreciative of God's care, of God's concern for this world, the way God keeps things going every day in the gift of His. This moment is His gift to us. How does it feel to live with what it does I mean, every day? Oh, it gets under your hide. <laughs> it gets irritable. Yeah. Find everybody's getting irritable and all. They end up going down to the tavern to have a beer, wash it out, and forget their troubles, I guess. We had a Spirit Lake Lodge a mile west of Spirit Lake, and uh, as far as I can tell now, it's under about 300 feet of debris from the ash flow that came down in St. Helens. We haven't had a chance to fly up there or look at it ourselves, but it's pretty devastated. Everybody I've talked to says you wouldn't want to see it anyway, but we're still waiting for the chance, and it'll be a while the way the ash is falling around here. There were trees cracking, uh, uh, walls and waves of mud, rabbits bleeding, animals moaning. A wood van, uh, a trailer, a semi-trailer, truck. This uh, houses, camper is the neighbors bridge. that used to sit clear over bridge. here. A bridge washed up there. Yeah, they saw a bridge go by. You know, if I sat here and uh, gave you an account of the last week, it would take a week to tell you because events happened that fast. I can't give you a prices of it all. And uh, did you expect this kind of thing? Would no, I, I couldn't see how the mud, this much mud, could come this far from that volcano with all the canyons and the valleys and that to fill up before it reached this point.
They never covered volcano management in forestry classes. <laughs> uh, it's it's awesome. It's a new experience, and you know, there have been no books written on how to manage a national forest with an active volcano. So everybody is learning and uh, just going day to day. Most of the people that that live up here or not are. You know, or uh, kind of an adventurous, uh, adventurous people to begin with. You know, and I think that probably it'll pretty well settle back down. Uh, it's going to take time, and uh, it's going to, you know, it, is, it has affected our whole way of lifestyle because it was a logging community, and I don't think there's going to be an awful lot of that left from now on. People are afraid of uh, the thing going off again, or, or are no, you afraid? Or no, not really. I'm concerned about it. I think everybody's going to be concerned. But what the devil? Uh, uh, you can't uh, be afraid of everything. You know, you've got to take one day at a time and just kind of live it as it goes. Uh -huh. uh, if it happens, it happens. If it don't, why? What the devil? If you were yeah. afraid of everything, you never, you wouldn't be able to get up in the morning. It wouldn't even be here. Well, what's it feel like to be right next to, uh, you know, the center of attention in the, in the country? I mean, does it feel special or? Well, I don't know whether it's special or not, really. I think we got something that uh, if somebody else wants it, I think they can go ahead and have it. I mean, <laughs> really, uh, it's, uh, uh, it had to happen someplace. It did here and that. We might as well just make the best of it as it goes. We've just been given a sentence like uh, cancer, heart disease. You're going to live so long. We don't know how long. Uh, people will avoid this area uh, for investment. They will have no incentive to invest. They will be afraid to invest. Do uh, you have it, personal plans? Uh, uh, my personal plans are to retire as soon as possible and leave this area. Do you know where you might go? A geologically stable area, such <laughs> as the Canadian Shield. <laughs> I don't think so. But, um... It's all starting to hit me now, kind of, when I start thinking back on the lake and keep flashing back on every, all the times up there. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thankful that the authorities did what they did to keep people out of there and which resulted in saving a lot of lives if they'd have opened that up there could have been hundreds of people down it was absolutely horrible i i've never been so scared in my whole life Do you still uh, think about it a lot or? i dream about it all the time night before last i dreamt that mount rainier erupted <laughs> <laughs> it uh it just kind of Oh, I've had the shakes ever since, too. I'm really a mess. So do you have any idea what you'll uh, do now uh, that it's wiped out? What do you think? Oh, not really. Just taking every day as it comes. It's kind of an eerie feeling with it falling all around us and the possibility of it continuing to spit ash out. I'm just kind of in limbo.